<laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. This is Dr. Kista Bilberry, and I am coming to you because um, we are reaching women all over the world, building confidence and kingdom mindset. And we are breaking barriers, um, breaking down barriers for that women are struggling with, um, with either married or single. I can feel the Lord's distress for his children when communicating with women. It's time for the walls of Jericho to come down in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, Joshua 6, 1 through 27, please, when you have a time, please read that scripture. Women have been in captivity for too long, and it's time for them to get their breakthrough. I am so honored and thankful to be able to host such a, a live chat um, to uh, send messages from God to you guys. I am so honored to be able to do this. And uh, But before we begin, I want to pray and then allow the Holy Spirit to take lead, you know. So, okay, every eye head bow, every eye closed. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our debt, as we forgive our debt to her. Forgive those who trespass and trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for that is a kingdom power and glory. And God, have your way in this uh, uh, meeting, Lord Jesus. Lord, we, we, we go before you, Lord, and we Thank you for all the things that you're doing, what you still yet to do. We thank you for what you have already done, Lord Jesus. Lord, have your way, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be who you call us to be, God. And forgive us of our sins, God. Forgive us if we haven't did what you have asked, Lord. Forgive us for allowing such things to come upon us um, that that doesn't even matter lord jesus but we pray and worship you god for you are worthy to be praised in jesus in my name we pray amen so i am um honored and thankful to be here to um um to talk with you guys i'm just so excited because over the course of my life the things that I have set my heart to do and I couldn't do it during the time, um, I kept telling God, I said, Lord, I will, I want to do this. I want to do, do this. And I'm, I'm going to give you guys an example of what God is doing for me. Um, when I was in my twenties, in my thirties, right. Um, I was going to school and I had to sacrifice time that was supposed to be spent with my children and my husband. There was, uh, and, and I kept telling God, I said, God, I feel like I can't be stretched anymore because I, it's like, I, I can't, I, I have no room, no nothing. And, and God was reminding me like, whatever you didn't do, don't worry about it. Right. So the example for me was, um, I kept telling God, I said, I want to be that wife. I want to be that mother. I want to be able to do everything. But for some reason, I couldn't do everything in the time that God has given me to focus on education, to focus on getting, uh, getting the career that he want me to have. But then when I'm completely done with everything, God allowed me to make up what I couldn't do during that time when I was in school, when I wanted to be the mom. I was able to do a little, but I wasn't able to give it my fullness, my all. And so, and God is like, and now that I completed everything, God allowed me to be the housewife that he called me to be for, for just, you know, there's a season for everything. So right now in my season, I'm able to make up what I lost during the time that I was in my twenties and my thirties of going to school. I mean, and, and, and I'm I'm now realizing what God is doing, which is amazing. You know, I, I I'm pretty sure you guys can attest to that. If you sit back and think about the past and think about all that you wanted to do, but you couldn't do it during the time that you wanted to do it, right? Because you had all these different directions, all these plans and stuff 
right? And then God wait to the later uh, part of your your age, the later days, and say, okay, this is what you said you always wanted to do. So now you get to make that up. And I am a testimony. <laughs> I am a huge testimony, guys, because God is awesome. He has always been awesome. He will always be awesome. And no one can take the awesomeness away from Jesus Christ. I love my father and he loves me too. He loves all of you guys unconditionally. Everything that you wish you could have, would have, should have. Let me tell you something. God won't forget that time when, when you're saying in your mind, like, Lord, I want to do this. I want to do that, but I don't have no time. So God help me. And, 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 and God still remembers your prayers. He still remembers the thoughts of what you said that you really wanted to do. But at that particular time, you, you're not able to do it. But then when, when you finish, when you complete everything that God did give you, he said, okay, now remember when you had, thought about x y and z but at the time that you couldn't even do it because you were too busy with what i was already doing for you you know so god is amazing and um i just love my father because he he loves me so much and nothing can compare to the love of God because when you put God first, everything will be added unto you. When you put God first, when you have this, this, this unconditional love that the Father gives to you, you'll be able to give to your, your children. You'll be able to give to your husband and your whole atmosphere changes. You'll be able to give to your siblings. You'll be able to give to your nieces and nephews and your aunts and uncles because God loves us that so much and so and and all I can think about is thank you Jesus for loving me unconditionally thank you Jesus for seeing fit that I am your child Lord Jesus thank you God because you know there's there's something about the name of Jesus that makes you want to jump out of your seat and praise God with everything you have God is awesome God is so awesome that he loves us so much. So you cannot limit what God said in his promises for you. You cannot, uh, don't, don't allow yourself to doubt the goodness of what God has already done in your life, what he still yet has to do in your life and what he already have done in the past for your life. Don't, don't doubt God for why he allowed you to wake up in the next day. Don't doubt God where he provided for you spiritually, physically, everything that you are needing in this time, in this hour. Don't doubt God because God is a rewarder of faith to them that love him. So don't doubt God because yet you don't see him working, but yet he is working. Don't doubt God because he is amazing God uh, beyond our comprehension. You know, God said that uh, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His His ways are not our ways. God is different, you guys. We're human, you know, and God, who Jesus, hallelujah. I see God working in the atmosphere. I see God working in my life, which I know, I know that he is doing such a greater work in me. I know because we are a we are an image of Jesus Christ. So guys, don't allow anyone to steal your joy. No one knows you better than Jesus himself. Jesus Christ himself. And I just want to let you guys know God is an amazing God and and you should not should not limit what God can do for you. You, God wants you to stay faithful. He wants you to stay prayerful. He, he wants you to take him at his word. You guys, everything, hallelujah, Jesus. There's a time for everything. And so I just want to tell you guys, don't doubt God of what he is doing in your life. Don't doubt him. Because the things that we couldn't do 20, 20 years ago, God still remember the prayers. He still remember the thoughts like, Lord, I want to do this. But at the time I couldn't do it because I was trying to do what you called me to do back then. You know, 
I'm telling you guys, God is faithful. He is so faithful to you. I mean, I and I am a living witness. I am so a living witness to what God is doing. So women, you need to think. You need to sit back, get into your room, get into your room and think all the things that you had told God that you wanted to do, but you couldn't do because either, you know, you was already busy or you didn't have the finances or, or you just wasn't readily available to do what you really want to do. But then God said, "Uh uh-huh, I still remember what you wanted to do, but yet I couldn't give it to you at that time because it wasn't time for you to have. But now I'm about to bless you with what you, uh, that your heart so desire. See, God is so awesome because he will give you more than what you have asked for, right? Oh my goodness, God is awesome. When you keep the co- uh, the covenant with God, when you keep his covenant, God will give you more than what you asked for. And I'm gonna tell you something. Um, sometimes the enemy will make, make it um, seem like as if we're not getting nothing from God, but we are. I remember back 20 uh, years ago when I was going to school and uh, I was stretched from limb to limb. I had no more room. I, I literally had no more room to do anything else because I couldn't hardly, I mean, when you have to sacrifice and when God has ordained you to do something and he wants you to keep that focus, he's like, don't worry about what's surrounding you. Just worry about what I'm doing for you in this hour. Study to show yourself approval unto me. Do do what the word of God is telling you because I'm going to tell you guys something. A lot of women and men and children, you don't understand that what God has ordained for you to have and to be is it comes from Jesus Christ himself now God will give you your heart desire but are you willingly to sacrifice are you willing to stand still so God can implement that he can input in you so you'll be able to give back what he have given you back to him and so um and I remember the time and this is personal experience what I've been through and I know you guys have been through it as well I remember and I was sitting in the family room today and God reminded me he said remember when you was in school and you were stretched from limb to limb you were I mean so this was my daily routine you guys and I I'm not lying I'm telling you the truth I was working at Quintiles and I was going to school for my bachelor's. I would, I worked night shift, 12 hour shifts, night shift. I'm, and I'm, this is based off my personal experience. I was working night shift, you guys, 12 hours a day. I was working seven 12s in a row. I got off at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. I, I, with little sleep that I had, I hardly had any sleep. I will literally drive about 30 minutes home to, to wake the kids up, to to make sure they get dressed for school. And then, uh, and then I will literally take them to school, drop them off. And then I had to drive like 45 minutes to my uh, Avila University, right? When I was uh, going for my bachelor's and I would do this every single day. And then I would be at school from in the morning and sometime late in the afternoon, late in the evening. Then I had to come home and I had to cook. I mean, there are times where I, I had no energy. I had no sleep, you guys. No sleep because I had to be at work by 6 30 p.m. and then I had to get off at 7 7 30 in the morning and I had to do this on a on a routine daily and I had no energy and then um it, it, it was not easy. Let me tell you something. Nothing is easy in, in life. It's not. But what God showed me is that you have to per you have to persevere. If you want it bad enough, 
what God has for you has your name on it. You have to persevere. You have to say, okay, I'll do it, Lord. I will do it. But let me tell you something. Okay. And this is all God. This is all God, what he has done for me in my life. And, and now I'm, I'm able to sit back and enjoy what God has given me and what he's got to do for me. And I'm just, I'm, I'm truly excited, you guys. So let me tell you something. When you go to the Lord God, come to him humble and, and 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 be like a child unto him be like god and he loves when we talk to him be like god i need help it, this course was hard and this you know i don't understand why i'm getting so much um hard force coming against me coming at me than me you know, and it's kind of like when the strong wind come to you and you're trying to push yourself against the wind, it's it's like, oh my God, when God has something for you, of course, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard because our testing of our faith, testing of our faith, are you going to believe in yourself or are you going to believe in Jesus? You know, God is so good. You know what? I just want, let's look at second Samuel um chapter 7 verse 18 this is david's prayer um god is amazing guys i love my jesus i'm so in love with my jesus because he he's in love with me he's in love with my husband he's in love with our children and i i always tell everybody be in love with jesus christ and when i say be in love be like talk to him all the time and say God I thank you I mean if I sit back and think about all what you have done for me and all what you still is doing for me mm, be like yes Lord God is God is so amazing I mean he is so amazing I can't help but to say he is so so amazing so let's look at David's prayer okay in second Samuel verse 7 verse 18 it says then David the king went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? Whoa, whoa, um, whoa. This is a confirmation to what God is doing to you, but you don't realize it because. All we think about is the right now, but we don't think about what God had brought us from and where we heading to. So this is so confirmational of what God is, he has already done and what he still is doing in your life. I'm going to read, read that verse and then I'm going to continue to read. Then David, the, the king went in and sat before the Lord and he said, who am I? Oh, Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? Woo, thank you, Jesus. Verse 19, and yet this was insignificant in your eyes, oh, Lord God, for you have spoken also of the house of your servant concerning the distant future. Oh, my Jesus. And this is the custom of men, oh, Lord God. Mm. We didn't think about it in, you know, 20 years in the past, we didn't think about when we was 18 and 19 years, oh, oh, where God was leading us to. We didn't think about that. All we thought about is, you know, being married and have kids, go to school and enjoying life. But we didn't realize what God already has done in our life. Look, I'm in my 40s now. And, and I'm like, wow, we are. God's children who he loves so much. There's nothing that God won't do for us. There's nothing. You can't put anything on God to where, oh, but God, you said this and I don't see it. God is already working, but you haven't sat there long enough to see what God has already done in your life and where he's taking you to. Guys, remember, you need to sit down. And remember what you were saying 20 years ago, like, Lord, I, I want to do this. Like, okay, I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, while well, I had so many tasks, 
I had to go to school. I had to work a full-time job. I had to be a wife. I had to be a mother. I had to be a friend. I had to be an auntie. I had to be uh, a niece. I had to be a nephew. I have all this going on. But then all I could, like, I was so tired. And I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. I was, I was drained of energy. I was drained mentally. I was drained physically. I was drained spiritually because I was like, God, I, I, I want to continue to put you first, but all this thing is pulling me out of my, my, out of my, my physicalness, you know, everything was pulling me out. And I was thinking, God, I want to be that, that, that helped me. I want to be the wife that you called me to be. I want to be, you know, whatever you, you know, a mother. I want, I, I like to cross my T's and dot my I's, but at least I know that I'm not perfect. So you guys, no one's perfect, right? But God is so amazing. So let's continue reading. I'm on verse 19. And yet this was insignificant in your eyes, O Lord God, for you have spoken also of that house of your servant concerning the distant future. And this is the custom of men, O Lord God. Verse 20. Again, what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God, I love to serve you guys. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. I love God so much that I can't help but to put to not never stop thinking of him. That's how much I love God. Did you not know that because when God came, when Jesus came in the flesh, he didn't come to be served. He came to serve others. So of course, as a woman of God, I've learned to love to serve er, serve others than serving myself. Because when I serve others, God gets the victory. God gets the glory out of me serving, like serving my husband, serving my children, just serving, you know, my mom, my dad, my, my you know, whoever. But, but it's not saying that you put yourself you know, well, of course, you got to put yourself last, right? But I feel so good into serving others because when I serve others, that put a smile on God's face. Yes, I do take time for myself. You do have to take time for yourself. Being a woman or being a man, being a child, you do need that, that self-care, you know, uh, 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 taking time out for yourself. And, and sometimes, you know, when we do take time out for ourselves, I, I like to watch, you know, Christmas movies, Christian movies. I like to watch things or I like to go out for a walk because our body was created to move around and not be stagnant. You know, I like to do things that makes me happy and God knows. And, and I'm going to tell you guys something. When you serve others, you are putting God first. Yes, yes. Being a servant of God, you are putting God first. Whether you see it that way or not, you are putting God first because God wants us to serve others instead of serving ourselves. But yes, you do can take time out for yourself, but I love to serve others because God gets the glory. He gets the joy out of everything we do that pleases him, right? So uh, verse um, 21 says, for the sake of your word and according to your own word, you have done all this greatness to let your servant know. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Verse 22, for this reason, you are great. Oh, Lord God, for there is none like you and there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. I love my Jesus, don't you? Don't you just love God? Just sit there and meditate on the word of God. Sit there and, and invite Jesus in wherever you at. Sit there and communicate with Jesus, even if you don't have to say a word, but 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 speak to him in your mind and he'll speak right back to you. I love Jesus so much. And I love how he called me to be a woman of God. I love how he called me to be a child of God. I love how he called me to be a servant of Jesus Christ and to be more like him and less of this world. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
And at verse 23, it says, And what one nation on the earth is like their people Israel, whom God went to redeem for himself as a people and to make name for himself and to do a great thing for you and awesome things for your land before your people whom you have redeemed for yourself from Egypt, from nations and their gods. Oh, Jesus, redeem me, Father God. Hallelujah. Redeem me, Lord Jesus. Redeem me. That's all I got to say. God loves his children. Oh, my goodness. Verse 24, for you have established for yourself, your people, Israel, as your own people forever. And you, O Lord, have become their God. Now, therefore, O Lord God, the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and his house, confirm it forever and do as you have spoken. Verse 26 that your name may be magnified forever by saying the Lord of hosts is God over Israel and may the house of your servant David be established before you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Gosh, I, you know, don't get me started here. Oh, please don't get me started. Jesus loves us so much, you guys. He loves us so much. What he did back over 2,000 plus years ago, he is the same God who's doing it to you right now. We are in the year of 2022. Now we're about to head over to the year of 2023. Don't stop believing in your Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Because he loves you. Yes, he does. Your work is so important for the kingdom of heaven. Your work is so important for your role in your house. Your work is so much needed. And God said, God, God is a rewarder of those who diligently serve him with the utmost. God loves you. And that when you represent God in your life, when you share the good news of Jesus Christ to others, oh, whoa, hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go to verse 27, right? It says, for you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel have made a revelation to your servant saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. Can I repeat that? Let me repeat that, y'all. Verse 27. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made a revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Mm. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. Verse 28. Now, O oh Lord God, you are God and your words are truth and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Didn't I tell you guys to hold on to every promise that God had made to you with your name on it? Everything that God promised you has a timing, a timing, which isn't your time, which is the Lord's time. So we don't work off for of our time. We work on God's timing for what he brings in our life. Enjoy being a grandpa and a grandma. Enjoy being a faithful spouse, a, a faithful wife and a faithful husband to your family. Enjoy being that dad and being that mom to your children because that is a greater work of being uh, more like Jesus Christ. Your role has many, many, many answers to it, okay? So when you think about what you're doing, well, Lord, am I pleasing you? Am I doing exactly what you called me to do? I, I, I like to know, Father God, you know, many women, many children, many husbands have that question. No, kids, you go ahead and continue to be kids. But I'm going to make sure that you know Jesus for yourself because the work that he has done for me or in me is the same work that he's going to do in you because God loves us. Yes, he does. Now, I'm going to go back to verse 28 because this this uh, scripture of Second Samuel uh, chapter 7, 
verse um two and uh, verse 18 through uh 29 guys god is amazing let's go back to verse 28 shall we now O oh lord god you are god and your words are true and you have promised this good thing to your servant verse 29 now therefore may it please you to bless the house of your servant oh thank you jesus hallelujah thank you jesus i'm gonna tell you guys something i was going to this one church um new direction and i was teaching every third sunday and God had me to speak to the congregation. He had me to speak to them and say, listen, whatever you are lacking in, what which area in your life that you are lacking in, I want you to say it. Because the area that you are lacking in, when you say that thing, it shall move. It, it, it will move mountains if you're lacking in your finances god is going to bless that very thing if you're lacking in the spiritual growth of god he will he will bless that thing whatever you are lacking in god will bless it and if you lack it in wisdom ask god to give you wisdom hallelujah jesus Ask God to give you wisdom, give you a spirit of discernment so that you'll be able to make the right choices, the right decisions in life that he gets the glory out of. We don't want to make the wrong decisions, right? He, he don't want us to do that, no. So let's go to verse 29. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord, God has spoken and with your blessings, may the house of your servant be blessed forever. Lord, I'm your servant, Jesus. Bless this house, Father God bless this house bless who runs this house god bless it in the name of jesus thank you lord hallelujah because an overflow is coming it's coming you guys god what god has destined ordained for you to have it shall be but it's not going to happen on our time but it's going to happen when god says so just like when he he spoke in genesis there shall be light and guess what happened light happened when there shall be night, night happen. When there shall be animals, animals happen. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you guys an, an, a mindset of when God spoke that thing, it happened. The winds, the water, obey Jesus. Peace be still. And it happened. So when God says that very thing that comes out of his mouth. Don't you think that you have the same authority that Je Jesus has given you to say, fear be gone. Fear in the name of Jesus be moved. Satan, you can't have this. Go back to the pits of hell where you belong. Boom. Everything that God had or destined, what he has said came into the existence and it happened like boom. That's the kind of faith that we need, right? That's the kind of faith that we need. So a lot of people who are listening to this live chat, remember, you need to speak as though the things that, that already happened. You got to speak it. Those who don't have a job, I shall have a job in Jesus' name. Boom. Uh, whatever, whatever area, like I said previously, whatever area that you are lacking in, just speak it and it will move in the name of Jesus. The faith, the faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence not seen. You got to have faith that can move a mountain. So when you speak something, it's supposed to happen. Boom. Now, if you said something like, okay. All right, well, I need some, I, I need my finances increased. So go ahead, increase it. And there's no faith in it. Faith without works is dead. So, oh my gosh, hallelujah, Jesus. I, I feel God saying this. I feel God saying this. There's a difference how you speak. Mm -hmm. There's a difference on how you speak. When Jesus said faith without works is dead, guess what's happening? You could say, uh, um, my children shall be saved. And, and if you have no faith in what you just said, faith without works is dead. 
that's when you say that it's dead just like that because you didn't show the audacity the authority that god had already given you so when you speak it you better show some work into it right <laughs> Faith without works is dead. So you got to speak it and believe it. And boom, it shall happen, right? God is so amazing. Oh my goodness, God is so amazing. I, I love what he says that. Guys, please read uh, 2 Samuel um, verse 18 through um, 29. It will bless your heart. We are servants of the Father Jesus Christ. And God, just like Jesus said in, uh, what was it? Uh, second kings i will um give you guys that later he says what did jesus say what did jesus say god says that we must we must be servants like him he didn't come to earth to be served where he came to serve others he knew that his children needs him or yeah, he doesn't need them, but he but the children needed him. And that's the reason why everything is happening the way that it is. Guys, God didn't come for the healthy. He came for the sick. Every uh, he came for the sinners. The sinners need a hospital. The sinners, they need Jesus, right? Now, if you're healthy, you don't think nothing is wrong with you, then you don't need Jesus. But God came for the lost, and, and and he he is he came for the lost. He came for the sinners. This world that we're living in is sin, nothing but sin. And 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 I'm gonna tell you guys something. A lot of people don't realize that they are committing sin unconsciously, subconsciously. They don't they don't know that they're actually sinning against God when the thoughts that they think or they saw something with their eyes that wasn't holy. They don't know what they're actually doing behind closed doors. But see, God knows the hearts. And when you sin, you, you're supposed to repent every time you sin. So that way you won't forget about that sin that had been 10 years ago and it swept under the roof. But then God be like, remember that sin? You didn't repent for that sin. We have to repent all the time, you guys. But I'm going to tell you guys something. We have to be servants to other people in order to show that we are serving God. God said, put others before yourself. If someone is hungry and, and you know what? I, I'm going to give you a little glimpse or a little example of what I'm saying. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to give you everything. I'm just going to give you one thing. Um, 20 plus years ago, um, I didn't have no money in my account, right? And so a particular person needed food and I overdraft my account uh, to bless them with food. Sometimes people will say, well, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't go in a negative for somebody else. Oh no, but let me tell you something. When God puts it on your heart to bless somebody who is in need of food, do it because let me tell you something that minute did you not know by you doing that that is a certain ministry unto god god will bless your ministry um and and when you when you bless somebody with a particular ministry god is going to bless you he said i saw what you did for my child but guess what? You don't ever have to go hungry a day in your life because you obey the voice of God. You did what I called you to do. You didn't quite understand what I was doing in that particular moment. But sometimes God has to test you in certain areas if you're going to be faithful with the little and he will bless you with much more. God will test us. We can't be selfish when it comes to Jesus Christ. We can't be selfish when it concerns others. God is saying, will you do this very thing that I called you to do? Oh, God is, oh, Jesus, hallelujah. God loves us. When he loves us, we need to learn to love ourselves. I didn't realize, guys, 
I am so thankful for myself. I am so thankful for who God is calling me to be. I'm stepping into the new of me. Guys, I, I am not, I'm not apologizing for anything except for if I, if I offend somebody, but I'm, you know, the real me. I love everybody and I'm not trying to, um, you know, cause anybody to err or whatever, but God is so amazing and he loves us so much. And all I can think about is Jesus in every, every situation that I go through, everything that had came to surface. I'm thanking God to, for him leading me out of that situation. I'm thanking God for everything that he has done in my life and still doing in my life. I am so thankful you guys, you know, I, I thank God for giving me wisdom. I thank God for giving me knowledge. I thank God for giving me understanding. I'm thanking Jesus because if it had not been for him, I would not be sitting here talking to you guys how good God is, how good that what he has done for me in the past, how good what God is still doing for my future. I am not I am so thankful, you guys. I just want to cry because God has been just that good to me. If you have a roof over your head, if you have food in your covenant, you got clothes on your back, you are blessed, whether you see it or not. You are blessed. If you got lungs in your, if you got breath, uh, uh, air, breathe into your lungs and you're still able to talk and able to walk, you should be thanking God for allowing him to bring you out of situations that you have no control over. Oh, amen. Things happen in our life for a reason, not to break us down to kill us, but to make us stronger. God is building your faith in him because Jesus is our blessed hope, our savior, our redemption, our redeemer. Who hallelujah, Jesus. God places us here for a reason. He didn't place us in this world, in this world to for us to be of this world. We're here for a particular uh, time, such a time as this for a season, but then when we get finished to doing what God called us to do in his will, then, it, and then hey, it's, it's all Jesus from there. It's all Jesus. But I, I'm just so excited because God is so good, but I love to be God's servant. I love to do what God called me to do. I love how he is is doing things in my life that I'm like, wow, you need to, for you need to be in a passenger seat, but Jesus is in the, um, in the driver's seat. So that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> God is so good. Um, but I just want to let you guys know that God is so good. He is faithful and uh, continue to do what God has called you to do. Enjoy the role that God has given you. You know, being a woman, yes, you may have experienced a lot of things, but you're not you're not still the same thing that you you was in, you know, 20, 30 years ago. We don't understand why certain things happen or why certain things that God allowed for us to happen to us. But all we know is that God is so so good to us you know so it's it's amazing what god is uh is doing in these last days so i, I love i love jesus so much he oh thank you jesus hallelujah so guys second samuel uh, chapter 7 verse 8 through uh, 29 read it read it to the fullest Thank you, God, that my house shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, that you said that you will build me a house. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you say, it will happen in the will of God. It will happen. Don't just say it and not. And God said, faith without works is dead. So when you have faith, you should know that that mountain will be moved because the authority that you, that you put behind saying what you got to say, you know. This too shall, you know, shall uh, uh, move. This too shall last. Thank you, Jesus. My children will be saved. Boom. You should be able to feel that when you speak it, right? Boom. <laughs> I, I love it. I really do. Um, 
but I love God so much, you guys. You just don't understand. I'm I'm truly excited and I'm truly I'm happy um what God is doing in these last days. And um but um but God also said to humble yourself, be humble, be be like Jesus, you know. When God bless you with things, be humble, be like, wow, God, you did this for me. Did I even deserve this? No one deserves anything when it comes to God. Nobody, because no one is righteous here on earth. No one is perfect. We all were sinners, you know, when we came into Jesus. And even though that we're living in a sinful world, that don't mean for you to be sinful, you know, strive to be, you know, good, you know, in God's eyes, strive to be like God. I know I'm not perfect, but here, here, I can give you this. I can, I can give you this. You know, God wants all of us, not just some part of us, right? Um, but yeah, I have a prayer card for those who, who found themselves, um, not who found themselves not in the in the sight of God. So, um, this is the prayer card. So, if you would like to repeat after me. Um, so you can be saved in Jesus' name. It, the work of Christ doesn't stay here. Um, so here we go. And this is my prayer repentance card. This is These are the cards that I make. Anybody can make these. Anybody can make these. God, you know, you want to be creative for God. How can I save souls for the kingdom of heaven? God placed this on me to make and create. And I got to make more of these cards because these are very very effective i'm telling you when you pray over what god has given you to do these are very uh, effective he'll he'll show you dear god i am a sinner against you you alone have i sinned and i'm so sorry i believe that jesus came to earth he lived sinless he died he was buried he rose from the dead because he did that he paid the price for every bad thing in my life his precious blood washed away my sin god i repented and i thank you you are a good god i am clean because of the blood of jesus now that i am clean i boldly proclaim jesus is my lord and savior lord jesus come inside of me oh i love you lord thank you that my name is inscribed in the lamb's book of life amen and that was the english version and here's the espanol uh, or oracion that means prayer in spanish it's a cuerdo dios estoy un pecador en contra tu to solo tener yo pecador, yo soy lo siento, yo creer que Jesús vino a la tierra, bebió sin pecado el muro, el fio enterado, resucitó de los muertos porque lo hizo, el pago el precio por cada cosa mala en mi vida. Su sangre priscos Precosa arrastro mi pecado. Dios me aprendí y te agradezco. Eres un buen Dios. Estoy limpio por la segre de Jesús. Ahora que estoy limpio, proclamo con valentía que Jesús es mi Señor y Salvador. Señor Jesús, entre en mí. O te amo, Señor. So, guys, thank you for listening to this video. And um, I just pray that you will spend time with God every day, every moment. And just spend time with Him. You know, have a conversation with Him, and He will converse right back to you. <laughs> That's just how good God is. But I don't want to take up too much of your time. But remember, um, my videos is reaching women all over the world, building confidence and kingdom mindset. Uh, we are breaking down barriers that women are struggling with. Um, either you can be married or single; it doesn't matter when it comes to God. He wants to break barriers that's in your life that is preventing you from the goodness of the Lord. God loves you, okay? Um, he loves you so much. Yes, I do. I do celebrate Christmas. 
I do celebrate Christmas. And the reason why I celebrate Christmas is because me and my husband have a love for Jesus Christ. We don't worship the tree. <laughs> we don't worship Santa Claus. Um, our kids know the truth about this time of year. And me and my husband, we love to give good gifts to our children. And we love to give good gifts to each one of us. And we just we just experience the good love of our father, Jesus Christ. Um, because he has been just that good to us. So, uh, but yeah, um, when you have when when you love when you really want to hear more of this video or more of the continuation of the rest of the videos, please subscribe um, um, down below, and I will continue. Uh, to make at least one video a week. Sometimes I can do two or sometimes I may skip a week, but I'm just letting you guys know that sharing the good news of our father, Jesus Christ is very important in these last days is because a lot of people are losing their way and they're losing their faith in Christ. Jesus is our blessed hope and we cannot live without the father. We cannot live without him. We need him daily. We need him every minute of the hour, every second, every minute and then every hour, right? So you guys have a blessed time today. Uh, it's December 10th. 2022 guys we only got a few couple of weeks until the new year comes so um enjoy god bless and i see you soon goodbye